So one of the things that I often get asked um, by many people is how did I actually cope with things when I was at the depth of the dark night of the soul? Um, or even now, how do I cope with things still to this day? Um, and the answer is really simple. I, I don't cope. I never did cope with it. I very quickly come to the realisation that by accepting it, that was actually the best form of coping. And if you stick around, I'll explain that because it might make sense to you. And then once I often feel like this is how I felt when I was at the depths anyway. I often felt like once I understood something, I didn't have to so much analyse it and really dissect it. I just needed to understand how something worked. And once I understood the workings of that thing, it kind of moved me forward and shifted me on. So this one's quite tricky because it's talking about different situations and I'm going to be jumping between the unconscious mind and the conscious mind or the matrix and our essence, if you like. Now, when I was deep in the dark night of the soul, I was constantly looking for something that would give me an answer, something that I felt like might enlighten me towards life or towards this journey of dark night of the soul. But what I found was that I got very involved and very heavily intoxicated in videos and in books, um, in t listening to spiritual gurus, um, and diverting myself by going to the gym, going for runs, sometimes drink, eating junk food, or sometimes in my case would fast or over fast on the food. Um, and I, was, I then realized that that was actually all a distraction for me. And this is where I say in a lot of the videos, we have to become very aware of when our egoic mind is at work because our egoic mind has a wonderful way of disguising itself as us, if you like. It will tell us to go to the gym. That's really cool. Don't sit there suffering something. Go to the gym where actually maybe we're feeling a bit shitty or in the case we're feeling shitty that we want to go to the gym, maybe we're feeling shitty, guys, because we just need to sit, relax and do nothing. But we have been taught through our conditioning that we need to come away from those feelings. No one's actually said to us, oh, run away from those feelings. But it happens in a roundabout way that people might say things to us like, you know, oh, come on, snap out of it. You've got a lot to be happy about. You've got all these things going on around you. It's really great. You just snap out of it. Come out with us. Come and get drunk. We'll have a great time. It's kind of all bred. And we see it in films and that stuff as well. So it's kind of unconsciously bred into us that we need to distract away from being totally alone or totally in silence at times. And I say at times. It doesn't, we don't have to do that all of the time, sometimes, especially going to the gym and eating well, that's all lovely distractions to have, providing you keep them in proportion with how you are as a human, if you like. I don't like the word human, but we know what I mean. How Keep it in proportion. You know, we've got to find this nice balance between our conscious entity and our physical entity. We've only ever been very conscious of our physical selves. So we've always looked at this body like this is us. This is how we are. And we kind of, we think we're reacting properly to what the body calls for. We're actually not, but I can cover that either later on or maybe in another video. But we've kind of always reacted to our physical bodies. And we pay very little attention to what goes on in our mental health and, or in our essence. And you have to remember as well that when we're in the matrix, we're not aware of an essence. Now, some of us might believe in God and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about believing in our own higher state of consciousness. When we're in the matrix, we kind of feel like that is what is. We're not aware that actually when our third eye opens and we align our chakras and you know, we meditate and we start going through this spiritual awakening that there is a higher state of consciousness waiting for all of us. And I don't think that level actually ever ends. I think we're all on a constant progressive journey um, on that ladder of awakening, if you like. Um, we have to remember that every single thing that we do, taste, act, watch, see, how we interact with others, how we socialise, everything we listen to, everything we read, it gets filtered. It's filtered through our conditioned mind. Why that's important to know is because the conditioned mind, the way that that thinks, is not how you think. 
That's not how your essence thinks. That's not how your higher state of consciousness thinks. Your higher state of consciousness doesn't really think too much about the things that we have otherwise been told are important. Because you have to remember, our conditioning has told us what is important in life. Our essence sees otherwise. Hence why I can stay in this position with no money in a freezing cold caravan, or at this time of year it's actually boiling hot. There's no real facilities here. I have very few people around me. Um, there's not, in, in the eyes of society, I'm a complete failure. But in the eyes of my essence, I'm a total success because I completely embrace that. I embrace the calmness that my essence can put into environments, into my environment, guys. And it will do the same for you once you kind of accept it. Now, do I always accept it? Am I always so in tune with my essence? Absolutely not. But that's part of the acceptance, is knowing that you're not always going to be in that mode of essence. Um, but most of the time, I, I kind of sit happily with whatever's going on around me, with whatever's happening. I don't fuss and stress too much. Um, and, and guys, this isn't a video uh, about me. I think we all know I don't really like talking about me as such, but sometimes I do think that it's nice for you guys to hear kind of how it feels, that in a real life of what otherwise would be deemed as really stressful, i.e. my life, I'm actually completely calm and comfortable with it. Does it bring moments where I, I kind of get worried or anxious? Absolutely it does. But even the anxiety that comes in is, is very short-lived. And when it does come in, I, I kind of just sit down now and think, OK, what's this anxiety telling me? Do I need to be frightened of this anxiety? No, we never need to be frightened of anxiety. That doesn't mean it's not frightening. frightening. It just means we don't need to be frightened of it. And so if you find yourself in this point where you're constantly diverting or you're constantly distracting away from things, we need to become consciously aware. And the way that we can become consciously aware is when we feel a feeling, say if I'm sitting here now, guys, I'll try and give you an example. My, my examples are always terrible, but I'll try and give you one. So if I'm sitting here now and I think, OK, I'm going to sit in silence for a little while. I'll make a cup of tea and then I'll sit in silence with that. There's the distraction right there that I'll make a cup of tea and sit in silence. So that's the, the conditioned mind, the egoic mind coming in saying, why don't you just do this first? Why don't you just do that first? How about if we done this and then we can sit in silence? It kind of wants to bargain with your essence, with your consciousness, where sometimes what it takes is to just, if we, if we become consciously aware of those things, of consciously aware of when the egoic mind is doing that, that's when we can take a pause, take a breath and think, do I really need a cup of tea before I sit in silence or should I just, is, no. Learn that feeling, that feeling that's deep down saying, yeah, make the cup of tea, there's nothing wrong with that. That is, that right there is what's stopping us in all our areas in life. If we get in touch with that feeling, it's that little, feeling of like wanting to do something else first. We need to bargain with ourselves before we do something. That little feeling of, shall I just make a cup of tea? It's not the thought of, shall I make a cup of tea? It's the feeling that created the thought of, shall I make a cup of tea? The cup of tea could look like, shall I have a bath first? Oh, I'll just call my mum first, what, whatever. It's the feeling that creates those thoughts that keeps us distracted away from what we actually need to do, which is turn everything off, sit everything down, sit back in our chairs and do nothing. That's the acceptance and all the feelings that come up of, OK, well, we've sat for long enough now, let's move on. No, just keep sitting. We will slowly learn that those feelings that come up in us, they are just feelings that are working and being filtered through the conditioned mind and they want us to not go into that place that feels scary, i.e. the essence. It feels scary to us because it's unfamiliar. 
And we kind of feel like if we go into that unfamiliar territory, we won't be able to handle it. But also we think if I go into that unfamiliar territory, I have to leave everything behind. Unfortunately, there is no, there is no way around that part. You will find that people and things, relationships, your, your job, sports that you like, foods that you like, will start moving to one side. And that's when you start realizing that most of our life has been spent distracting away from our essence. We didn't know we was distracting from an essence. We're distracting away from the feelings underneath. But the feelings underneath is the kind of calling of the essence that is saying, hey, listen, something's not right in your life. I'm here, I'm waiting to help you out, but you never come into me, you never speak to me, you never want to indulge in me. All you ever do is when you feel me arising, you then say, oh, I'm going to the gym. I'm tidying my ass. Oh, get on with this. I'm a strong human being. I'd move away from this. I don't suffer this. That's kind of what we do. And that in itself is what keeps us down. But it gets to the point, it gets to the point, guys, where like what's probably happened to most of us, something happens that we just can't take it and then we're in the dark night of the soul. And the only reason you know you're in dark night of the soul is because you researched on it. You didn't just kind of come from the working person that you was, if you like, and then one day felt shitty and went, oh, well, guess it's my turn for Dark Knight of the Soul. <laughs> Nobody does that. You found out about Dark Knight of the Soul because you looked for it. You, you looked for why you was feeling shitty. And as you listen to these videos and that stuff on Dark Knight of the Soul, there's something there that goes, that's me. Oh, shit, I thought I was down. I thought I was depressed. I thought I was... No, I'm going through a transitional period. Now, I'm not saying that in every single case. You've got to be careful that we don't get the two things mixed up. But I have done a video on the difference between depression and Dark Knight of the Soul. Um, go back and check, check that one out. But that's ultimately why, how you know you're in the Dark Knight of the Soul. Because you searched on why you don't feel so great. And you read the Dark Knight of the Soul and you're in it. And then you, it starts to become clear that, oh yeah, those feelings I always had underneath was the calling of the essence or the consciousness, the, the love, God, whatever you, whatever you choose to call it. I vary all over the place with mine. It can be consciousness, it can be love, it can be God, it can be spaciousness, awareness. It, it just kind of goes everywhere because there is no set term for it. But I don't think there's anything else I really need to say to you, that kind of went all around the houses and a bit off on a tangent and stuff like and that. Do you know what, guys? So many of you send me emails saying that you, you want to do your own channels or you want to do something else in life and you're hoping that you find inspiration from me to do that. Well, take the inspiration from it, but inspiration will only become effective if you actually act on it. And going by some of the comments that you guys give and the descriptions you tell me about what you're living in your own personal lives, go for it. Leave your videos up. Stop waiting to be perfect before you start. Maybe the perfection comes in your imperfection of how you think you are. As in my case, guys, we've said this, I've said this so many times. Dyslexic, can't read as I'm talking, so therefore I have to flow. And I always have this fear that I digress off too far. But the digression is what a lot of you enjoy. So therefore, I'm like, okay, well, let's just free flow then. And let's just digress. Because if I build up an audience, it might be slow, but if I build up an audience of people who enjoy watching me digress all over the place, then isn't that wonderful? I can just hit record and use my weakness as my strength. <laughs> and so, you know, but guys, just go for it. You're only not going for it because you're lacking self-belief Maybe you're lacking self-belief because you've never ventured into those territories that require a little bit of courage, if you like. Courage is the wrong word, I don't know. Bravery or front, whatever it is. But to go into those areas and actually think, what is the worst that happens to me? What is the worst that happens if nothing works here and I look like an idiot? What's the worst on this video, guys, if you're all sitting there thinking, what's Tobon about today? He sounds totally different from all these other videos. That's it, I'm unsubbing. And you all unsub. 
I mean, please don't do that, guys. You know, I love you to pieces. You know I do. Um, <laughs> but a little bit of flattery is sometimes called for, I think. But, um, you know, you get the point. What actually happens? Nothing. It's just, oh, okay, I'll, I'll just start again and let's see what happens. Just keep going, keep doing my videos um, and see what happens. So, yeah, guys, just do it. Just do it. Forget what other people are thinking. Trust yourself. Trust yourself that you know what you're doing that you're it's a fine way of getting in touch with that essence and seeing that nothing will happen because the only way you're ever going to find out that nothing bad happens to you is by doing the thing that you think is going to make other people think bad of you and then you realize they don't and if they do it just doesn't matter anyway i didn't mean that to go kind of into that type of video so um there you go but hey that's, that's, that's how it is, I guess. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I hope you're still here. What are we on now? Jesus, man, it was, so I thought it would be about a six, seven minute video, 25 minutes on, but there you go. Anyway, guys, I love every one of you. Thank you and hello to all the new subscribers and all the wonderful comments all you guys always give me. Um, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. It's a lovely hot day here, hot, hot day here in North London, but thankfully it's a little bit overcast. Um, I'm gonna go for my walk along the river, go into town, get an ice cream and a cup of tea, and I'm even tempted to drive somewhere this weekend, although I have to watch the money a little bit, so. Um, but we'll see, anyway guys, hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and uh, peace.